Hi, Janine. Thanks so much for joining PA today. Um, I'm really keen to hear about, you know, your, your past, your story, and, and, and how you've managed to cope through these years. So um, we're joined by Janine today, who is a permaculturist with a, with a small business working in Byron Bay. Um, you're an educator, you're a, um, a consultant, and um, you've seen massive changes um, happening this year um, from what I've heard. So um, I'm really keen to hear about how you've negotiated those challenges and, and what we can learn from, from the way that you've sort of managed to deal with these massive changes happening this year. Um, so without further ado, um, let's, let's get to some questions. So um, I thought I'd start in the past um, and, and, and hear about you know, how, how you discovered permaculture. So, so where, did this, where did this whole journey um, sort of begin? Yeah, thanks. Um, I guess I've always grown up with um, homegrown produce and composting and our, my parents were great gardeners and but it was something I think I just thought was normal and I really took it for granted I think as a child. I look back to my the way I used to eat and what my school lunches were like and it used to be like mum why can't we have store-bought something like all the other kids when I'd have all these homemade things in my lunchbox <laughs> thinking that oh, why can't I have that and now I realize wow how privileged I was to grow up um, with really good wholesome organic food most of the time um, so it's always been in my life and in my family but I guess as an adult it started for me about five years ago mm -hmm. um, I got a job as a barista working um, at a place called Harvest in Nuri Bar. It's about 20 minutes into the hinterland from Byron Bay. And it's a really beautiful um, little village where they've got a um, restaurant, a deli and a bakery that's surrounded by a permaculture garden. Oh, wow. And I was in a stage of my life where I was, I'd done lots of different jobs. I'd lived overseas, I'd been traveling, studied this, studied that. Mm -hmm. I was in between lots of things mm. and looking for that thing, that the passion, the what can I do with my life? Um, I was about 25 and I was thinking something's got to give here. Um, and so lucky I landed this job and I started making coffee and just looking at the gardens around me. And there were these two amazing permaculturists working and running the property, Rachel and Phoebe, and they were amazing women. And I just thought, I need to do that. That it was like such a draw for me, what they were doing and just their whole life and just chatting, chatting with them. So I started, yeah, really hassling them and saying, I want to do this. And luckily for me, Phoebe left and they offered me her position because I was just asking about it so much. And uh, at the same time that I got that job, I uh, enrolled in a permaculture course through the Byron Bay Community College. There's the campuses in Mullumbimby mm -hmm. and they do a really great hands-on practical experience. They've got lots of great teachers and I just emerged myself into the, to mm -hmm. the life and to the world and it became my obsession and that's where it all started. Wow. Wow. That seems like you got like such a massive, massively hands-on experience at the beginning. That's really awesome. Really, so, really lucky. Yeah. yeah it yeah. was right place, right time. Um, yeah. Cause I think a lot of people with permaculture, you spend a lot of time volunteering and you do a lot of, um, you go to different farms and different gardens and you sort of, the best experience for me anyway, is obviously hands-on learning. Um, Season, yeah. season year to year things change so much weather patterns are different yeah. there's droughts then there's floods then there's storms then you know there's all these different things and without yeah. actually physically observing those while you're working and mm. working with nature it's hard to learn that from a book so I was really lucky to get both so hands-on practical experience plus the all the learning that I was doing in my other time um, yeah. yeah it was a great oh. combination yeah, yeah. And so can you tell me a little bit about like what your permaculture philosophy is how, and how this emerged and maybe who your influences were through that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I really love combining practical permaculture with aesthetic permaculture mm -hmm. because I find um, I've gone to a lot of permaculture farms and gardens and did volunteering it over the last few years. And yeah. Sometimes I can go to permaculture um, 
forests or gardens where there's a lot of really different amazing plants that do all different things and learning how they contribute to each other and to nature and to us. But I find um, so that scares a lot of people. People think, oh, it's outside of the norm and mm -hmm. I'm not really sure if I want to go there. And um, there's a lot of, I've found a lot of, um, a lot of my clients or people that I've met have an idea of permaculture that it's this crazy, messy, full of weeds and full of all these weird plants that they don't know what they are and it's quite daunting to them. So I sort of refine my permaculture skills into practical, um, aesthetic, beautiful gardens mm. that look really good but function really well and follow the permaculture principles. So mm. lots of interplanting and teaching people why that's important and um, using all the knowledge that I've gained through my permaculture courses and then merging them into, a, I guess, more of a formal way of gardening, but still following the organic yeah. um, earth care. I think pe like people care for me is a big part of it. Um, that's my main focus, I guess, when I'm doing my gardens, because I really like sharing my knowledge and passing that on to other people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well that, that fits really nicely with, with what I was going to ask next, which was about your business. Um, and so based on what you've just said, it seems that a lot of the clients that you're, that you're dealing with in your business are very new to permaculture. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do you sort of go about, um, go about speaking to people who are very new to this concept and who might be really daunted and, and what kind of need are you feeling um, for those people? Yeah, well, um, I found when I started working in the permaculture industry and doing this kind of work, I just thought, oh my God, this is so amazing and I want to do more of this. And so I started asking different garden businesses around the Byron Shire for work. Can I do this and do you have space? And I just kept getting like not really responses or people would say, no, that's not really what we do. So that's why I started my business because I really found that there was a gap in the market for someone like myself um, to give people a really hands-on experience of growing food at home because yep. you know I have people saying I can't even grow rosemary and why is my you know like things like that <laughs> I just yeah I just thought people just need more confidence but um, that's I think there's such an over saturation of information on the internet that you can google anything you want but I go to people's homes and help them directly mm -hmm. with their own stuff. And mm -hmm. so we can talk about sun direction and wind direction, where the rain comes in and what slope that their property is on and try, figure out all of those things for them. So they kind of can go, ah, oh, I get it now. And now they've got a direction to go forth and then teach them more in stages. I see. Um, yeah. So it's a really supportive, my business, I want it to be really supportive and really um, just giving people the confidence and the skills and knowledge and not all at once, you know, taking it baby steps. So let's do this and really nail it and then move on to the next step and really nail that and then get bigger and bigger. So, yeah. you know, as you learn more, it just feels natural to evolve from there. Yeah, yeah, and it, and that seems to be really helpful as well for them because that because then they can become you know self sufficient and they at some point don't require your assistance as well and they can keep totally. going with the legacy. Yeah, like I've said to so many people, I'm trying to put myself out of business here. <laughs> if everyone can grow their own food really well, yeah, that's my goal. Is like if if I'm not needed anymore, how fantastic would that be? Yeah. 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 Um, so I've also seen that you work with public spaces, which I think is really fascinating because that's a space that we're, that's often missed out when we're talking about when we're talking about permaculture. So how do you approach public spaces? Is that a really different sort of idea, a very different concept to people's private gardens? It is. Yeah, it's a it's such a different thing. Um, obviously, with public spaces, there's so many considerations. Um, people ask me what's your biggest like pest in the garden what do you deal with all the time and I'm like it's people most of the time <laughs> actually yeah um, it's people yeah and misinformation and 
mm. um, misguidance and that education part is lacking. Mm. And it's really hard to make a public space because quite often we, um, you know, you do a garden, you've got your ideas and you want it to be like this. And as we know with nature, it's not about what we want most of the time. We can do as much as we can and nature does the rest. But when you also add a third element of human destruction, um, mm. that is really challenging. So um, I, it takes a while to understand habits of people. Yeah. Um, and so now, and I, I do two public gardens in the Byron Shire. One is still at Harvest Neary Bar, yep. um, where there's a lot of children and a lot of dogs. I see. So um, working with children and dogs in the spaces <laughs> is really interesting. So it's yeah. I've got to plant smarter and strategically. So, for instance, little kids love picking cherry tomatoes. It's just a given. They're going to see a ripe tomato and they're going to take it and they're going to eat it. And that's nice to be able to provide that for children, but I'm still trying to grow food for the kitchen and for the chefs. So it's actually produce that I'm growing in a public space where it's for a reason. So I might now, in my first couple of years, I would just put the tomatoes out in the front and you know, get frustrated when they all got picked. So now I sort of put them behind and then maybe I'll grow like corn or sunflowers in front of them. So that's what you see first. And it's like, wow, look at that beautiful thing. And the tomato is sort of hiding at the back. But it means that I get a really good crop and a harvest. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not necessarily doing things the way I would like to, but I've found a way that works. And I think I see. that's also important for all of us to remember with our gardens is that it's not about what we want at the end of the day. We're just guardians that are growing food and growing spaces and doing what we can but at the end of the day we're not in charge either nature has the final say so it is humbling to remember that as well and i do like the challenge now of public space um gardening because it's really fun to to play with how people interact with gardens as well yeah yeah because i've heard another another sort of public space gardening hack is that you plant a lot of root vegetables because no one who's who isn't in the know <laughs> doesn't know that the, all the good stuff is happening under, under totally. <laughs> yeah. yeah that sort of stuff it's so clever and it just makes yeah. sense yeah yeah definitely <laughs> um so um, I've heard that you've been very, very busy in your garden these past couple of months under lockdown. So could you yeah. tell me about what you've been up to, what's been happening and, and what's been working? Well, for my business, um, I guess when COVID struck, everyone kind of panicked and thought, oh my God, is the food system going to collapse and are we going to be starving? So everyone had this intense mm. moment of, oh my God, we need to grow a garden. Um, and I found a lot of people have sort of wanted to for a long time and they've used, this has now given them that incentive to go, this, we need to change our lifestyle. Yep. So that's what I really love because that's what I encourage as well. I'm not about just doing a pretty garden and walking away. Mm. It's like, if it's, I work with people, yep. not for people. And it's about me giving you that knowledge and supporting you so that you can do it yourself. So that sort of all sparked and panicked and, um, I've probably built 50 raised garden beds in the last few months for people, which is incredible. Yeah. Um, and putting in wicking beds as well, which is really, a, I'm a huge fan of, especially we had such the bad drought last year yeah. and that's sort of inevitable in the future as well. So um, teaching people why that's important and people in bed wanting to invest that as well is really great. And then, um, I was fortunate enough, my partner and I bought a house just when COVID sort of hit as well. So I've been doing my own garden um, on my own little bit of land and bringing in all of those principles as well. So rainwater tank and solar panels, chickens, oh, um, yeah. raised garden beds, wicking beds, fruit trees, beehive, compost, <laughs> all of that stuff. So yeah. doing it for myself and doing it for other people. It's been yeah, yeah a crazy last few months. Oh, wow. Wow. That sounds, yeah, that sounds like it's been very hectic. Yeah. Um, so based on that, do you think, you know, the time for permaculture has come? Do you think this is, this is the time where people are like the mainstream is really starting to embrace it or where the mainstream should be really starting to embrace it? 
I think so. I definitely think so. Like our generation, we know, and the older generation above us, it's kind of also getting that clicking a little bit onto it. It's just so hard. I, I find like my parents' generation, obviously they grew up in the time where plastic and television dinners and microwaves and fat free and shakes and all of this stuff became so popularized and they thought this is the great thing so now we're kind of trying to break that down those habits but I'm finding now children like so many primary schools have gardens have composting have worm farms kids come into the garden if I'm working at harvest in the public space and they come with their parents kids can identify stuff in the garden that their parents can't I'm finding that's happening a lot so I have huge hopes for the generations below me that they're going to come and that's just going to be another normal part of their lives Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm finding yeah people really see it now as a lifestyle not just Mm -hmm. a beautiful thing that sits over there and after a few months when it gets neglected you go and do something it's like it is a part of people's lives and it's accessible now as well yeah Um, and it's almost trendy I think the whole plant craze and the garden craze um and I just yeah I really hope that it's a trend that just is a normal part of life yeah I, I really think it is it seems like it people are getting so much joy and love and satisfaction from it and also yeah. in our busy world it helps us slow down a lot and I think yeah. people are gardening for that reason it gives them a chance to switch off mm. phone off outside nature hands yeah. in the dirt it's really therapeutic yeah yeah and and a really think, positive thing yeah yeah and, and I think we, we really also have to thank all of the all of the kids educators um, a lot of them are with PA who were yeah. sort of really working with you know schools and kids as you say to bring in all of these amazing yeah. garden beds and, and worm farms and yeah. sort of providing that, that education for them because you it is incredible yeah it, it really it really helps them later in life um yeah. so thanks so much janine um i think we'll finish the interview there um this has been really fascinating um i've learned so much about about you and what you've been up to and, and about how you sort of how you sort of think about the world. And I think that's really valuable. Um, So thank you very much. Um, And um, as always, it's really lovely to turn the spotlight onto our amazing members who are doing such amazing stuff um, across Australia um, by inspiring um, people to come to permaculture and by by, um, educating them about about what they could be doing. So thank you for everything that you do and and thanks very much um, for chatting to me.